It's a rare book series that can be equally famous for its blend of a variety of myths and theologies, and also be equally famous for its absolute celebration of Opai. I couldn't be talking about many other series other than High School DXD. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing volume number one. This one is by Ichie Ishibumi. It's got art by Miyama Zero. This one's released officially in English by Yen On with a translation by Hayden Trowell. If you want to pick up your own copy of this one, I've got links in the description down below. Now in High School DXD, we join good old average teenager Issei. Now, Issei, yeah, I mean, he is really average. Uh, he's not had a lot of luck with the ladies. Maybe that's because he hangs out with two other guys and between the three of them, they're um, not exactly candid about their appreciation of the female form and enjoying media that celebrates the female form. You know, hentai, ishi stuff, erotica. Yeah, like, that tends to creep girls out, and so uh, these guys find themselves pretty much on the low end of the social hierarchy. However, despite all that, Issei ends up finding himself with a girlfriend, a very cute girlfriend. And when they go on their first date, he has everything planned. Everything, except the fact that she's going to ram a massive spear right through his chest and kill him. Surprise! In any case, as Issei lies there bleeding out, he has this vision of his fresh red blood, and it brings to mind this absolutely gorgeous senpai at his school, Rias Grimmery. And he thinks to himself, it would be worth it to see her again. Well, lo and behold, Rias does actually appear before him. And she is able to save his life. The only catch is, is that it'll make him a demon and he'll be her servant. Well, I mean, hey, come on, becoming a demon? It's not so bad. After all, Issei figures if he becomes strong enough, maybe he can achieve his dream of his very own harem. Now, High School DxD is one of those series that has fluttered around the fandom for many years. Uh, there's been fan translations of the light novel series online that a lot of people have read over the years. This one started back in 2008, and in fact, it's currently done in Japan. In fact, so done with more than 20 volumes that there's now a continuation series called Shin High School DxD, which, as I understand it, is supposedly telling the last arc of the overall story. Now, there's also been, of course, I think, what is it now, four seasons of anime? I might be wrong. I know there's been at least three or four. Um, and of course, yes, they are known for their plethora of shots of breasts. They are quite eshy, but at the same time, this series does manage to cohesively pull together some rather disparate myths and theologies to create this sort of one odd, crazy, supernatural world that, well, pretty much all of us go in our day-to-day -day life without having any idea even exists. For instance, in this first volume alone, we're introduced to, of course, the demons, we're introduced to fallen angels, we're introduced to actual angels, and we're introduced to exorcists, both rogue, who are like independents, and also the concept of exorcists that work for the church. All of them, of course, lined up to take out demons. We get some background on sort of the demon world and how it's organized. And all in all, this book, funny enough, considering that it's really not long, it does quite a bit of world building. It even goes so far as to give us a glimpse as to what do demons do in our world in order to gain energy, strength, power, and everything else. As it turns out, it seems to be pretty much fulfilling the wishes of incredibly lonely otaku. But we'll talk a little bit about that further. I think the first thing that's kind of ironic about this first volume, and granted I've seen some of the anime, so I know that there's a bevy of beauties that get added to this series, which means far more eshy moments to come, but this first volume, given the reputation of this series, is really actually kind of wholesome by light novel standards. I think there were breasts mentioned far more in the Demon Swordmaster of Excalibur Academy than they are in this book. In fact, Issei is a really 
average teenager. This book is told in the first person from his point of view, and he really doesn't strike me as being all that odd or even hyper-perverted for your typical heterosexual teenage male. About the biggest issue with Issei that sets him aside from your average heterosexual male is the fact that Issei every now and then will actually blab things out of his mouth about loving breasts and does that mean I can get a harem? Like, you don't really say to your demon lord and master, hey, you mean if I become a powerful demon I can have a bevy of beauties like waiting on me hand and foot? I don't know if that's the first kind of impression you want to be making, especially given that said demon master is a beautiful female. In fact, the really, like, the only real eshy moment in this book, and it doesn't even feel eshy, is when Issei wakes up one morning naked beside Rias, and you realize that she is in complete control of the situation, and, in fact, is amused by Issei's actual, un you know, his discomfort of the situation. In fact, Issei himself is aware that perhaps she feels embarrassed that he's seen her naked and so he kind of averts his eyes and kind of says to her like, you know, maybe like, I, I, I can see. And of course she thinks this is hilarious, but it shows why Issei is not the most annoying character of all time. At least again, I'm, I'm talking about this first book, don't know what happens to Issei as it goes on. I haven't even seen all of the anime. But in this book, we have a guy who, yes, he's horny. He's a teenage male heterosexual. It, it happens. But he's not a douchebag. When it comes time to helping a girl named Ashia that he meets, he helps her with pretty pure intentions. When he meets her again and she seems depressed, he decides that He's going to make use of all the plans he had, of all the things he was going to do with his girlfriend, and uh, actually show her a good time and just have her relax and kind of blow off some steam and feel good about things. And again, he's doing it for just the purpose of being a good guy and because he's concerned about her. And as I said, when he wakes up next to Rias, his initial reaction, aside from shock, is... Concerned that she'll be upset. Concerned that she'll feel victimized because he's seen her. Which is, you know, kind of a little bit different than what we see in a lot of eshy light novels where it's mostly eshy because of unintentional pratfalls and unintentional grabs and all this kind of stuff. And like I said, it's... it's Actually, I think Sean Gaffney said that on Twitter and I think it's just perfect, so I'm going to steal it. It's almost wholesome, given, given its reputation and given what other light novels we have in English already. I mean, really, like, the mature warning label that you see down here is pretty much because of two illustrations, one color illustration and, of course, one in black and white, both of them featuring Rias in that morning after where she is naked beside Issei. Again, they're not graphic, but... Like, it's really no different than a ton of other bathing scenes or changing scenes or anything else that we've seen in a ton of other light novels that don't even really wear their whole eshy heart on their sleeve the way High School DxD does. It also struck me as kind of funny how the author has these moments of perhaps, I don't know whether to call them like trolling his fan base or self-awareness, I'm not too sure, but like... For instance, Issei and his two buddies, they make this plan. They're going to go back to the one guy's house and they're going to watch a whole bunch of dirty videos, right? Bunch of hetero guys hanging out because they don't have girlfriends. They're just going to spend time ogling and commenting on girls in videos. And what ends up happening is, is that it causes them to be incredibly sad and depressed because they're realizing that it's just compensation, that because they aren't popular, because they... You know, I mean, they aren't very self-aware to realize why it is that they aren't popular and what they can do to fix it. But, you know, because of that, they realize that this is empty. It's, it's not meaningful. And it was kind of a weird thing to have the author put in there. And then later on, when Issei's starting his duties as a demon and visiting people that summon demons, like, most of these are just lonely dudes who are otaku and seem to really just want some company or 
are just looking to sort of fill this empty void in themselves. And it just struck me as, yes, it's, it's, there's comedic element to it. it it's not played as like this boo for people kind of thing, but, but it just kind of made me think the authors may be a little self-aware or is a very aware of their audience and potentially maybe some of the darker secrets of their audience that may walk around looking brash and confident and they all are loving that hentai, but in reality, they're just like, damn, I'm lonely. And again, it's these things like those moments, the fact that Issei is completely capable of having more than just the thought of boobs in his head uh, and doing decent things for people just for the sake of being decent, that makes the book pretty palatable. Uh, the action sequences are okay. Uh, they're not exactly crazy. I mean, it's the first book. We really only have Issei getting involved in sort of one situation, and even then he's pretty lousy at it because he's the new guy. Um, so we don't get quite the crazy huge magic battles that certainly the series promises in the future and that I know it does have because, again, I have seen some of the anime that goes beyond this first volume. Again, it's very well written. The book itself has a good steady pace to it. That's probably because it is written as a novel. This isn't like a web novel that was written in little bits and pieces that just have been sort of mashed together to make a book. There is an overall arc and plot to this first volume. Uh, you know, it, it does hold together as a cohesive whole. It's not just little moments and vignettes. You, you really do feel, as I said, that there is sort of a conscious world building going on behind the scenes. In fact, at the uh, end there, uh, Ishibumi talks about the elements that he's hoping to bring into the series later on. So talks about the different kind of mythologies that he wants to bring in and sort of where he wants things to go and talks about how he sees Issei as this good guy who kind of says and does some stupid things that, you know, more conscious dudes would not do. And True story, I think that's pretty much what I have said in this one. Now in terms of secondary characters, they're all kind of given their little bits that make them stand out, that make them memorable. In particular, I think this whole idea that each of the demons in Rius's servitude all are represented by a chess piece. There's sort of a bit more to this and it's in the book and go ahead and read it if you're that really interested. But those sort of traits of those chess pieces associating them with the characters really kind of helps solidify them in your head. And, you know, each of them have a personality that, sure, at this point is kind of paint by numbers, but they're all distinct enough and the way they speak and carry themselves is distinct enough that you can see that there is some thought to who these people are as characters. They're not just purely cannon fodder or space filler in the background. Like, all in all, if I'm going, I'm going to be really blunt about High School DxD, the plot itself doesn't do anything that's earth-shattering in this first volume. Again, I know that it does other things, and there's more complicated plots and arcs and everything else ahead. I'm not judging this as a series overall. I'm just saying that this first volume, I mean, it's a pretty standard first volume. It's a pretty standard urban fantasy, high school, magical battle type series. There's not a lot in it that makes you go, wow, this is super unique. But when you consider, again, that this book is over 12 years old at this point, I think you kind of have to realize that we're sort of reading a book that's a moment in history as well, right? A lot of the light novels that we've been getting in English are newer than that, more recent than that, and so a lot of them are actually rifting off of some of the stuff that High School DxD did first. So it's kind of hard to judge it in that way. Um, I'm just going to say that if you walk into this first book with hearing all of the hype about this series, and like I said, there is lots of hype. Lots of fans have been asking for this series for a very, very long time. You might not initially go like, I don't get it. <laughs> I mean, like I said, even if you're reading it for the Eshi bits, this first volume, you might be like, I don't get it. <laughs> but I mean, books featuring little girls seem to have more Eshi than this. But anyway, um, I'm just saying, like, you might walk into this with a certain expectations that might not be met by this first volume alone. I suppose all I can say is you're going to just have to give it some more time. And as I said, also realize that this being an older series that kind of 
forged a path for a whole bunch of other series, well, you know, you gotta cut it some slack and let it do its thing. There's still lots of story to go. I, I can't remember offhand how many volumes. I know it's well over 20 that this first series is, and there's a number of in Shin High School already. So it's a long series. It's got lots to do, lots of places to go. You talk to people who are longtime fans of this, and man, they'll talk to you about lore for ages. So like, and as I said, even in this first volume being relatively short, we already have quite a bit of world building going on and lore being kind of at least alluded to or some, uh, you know, background being established to build on going forward. Also, since this has like been a very hotly anticipated book and, uh, you know, lots of pressure probably on Yano not to mess it up, I have to say that the translation I thought was really, really readable. Um, you know, there was just, it was just a nice, smooth translation to it. I never felt like there was word usage that kind of took me out of the action. Uh, again, like, I, I was not a reader of the fan translations. I'm not able to camp compare it to anything. I can't read Japanese, so I can't compare it to that. All I can tell you is that as an experience of a English-only reader, I thought it was really decent. There was nothing in here that kind of took me out of the book because it seemed weird or inappropriate or... You know, they just suddenly decided to use some big word when they hadn't used it anywhere else and hadn't even alluded that they were capable of using something like that. Um, so overall, I thought the writing was really smooth, really well done on this one. You know, High School DxD, if you've been looking for that sort of set in our modern world, but this whole bunch of crazy fantasy paranormal action magic stuff going on underneath the surface, it's not a bad series to jump into. Again, there's going to be lots of boobs going forward. If you're okay with that, then hey, have at it. Like I said, at least in this one, we know that the main character is totally into breasts. So it's not like you don't know what you're getting right from the start. And at least it's appropriate for the character that he notices and discusses said boobage. In this video, I want to say a special thanks to Mitchell Von Regen, Kyle Block, Yun, Shelly Ann, and Drone205 for their support on Patreon, as well as the support of all of my patrons who help to keep the channel running, as well as supporting all of my other light novel related projects, such as the Light Novel Podcast and EnglishLightNovels.com. So we go from one book where we have a bunch of high school students that are secretly demons and fighting monsters and all that kind of stuff when everybody else isn't looking, to going to a high school where everybody knows that there are magicians. In fact, that's the very reason that they're in the school is to do magic. And they're all well aware that magic's gonna drive some of them insane, make some of them absolutely murderous, and will kill some of them all well before they even graduate. I'm talking about volume number one of Reign of the Seven Spellblades. This one's gonna be my next review. Um, yeah, I, you know what, it, it would be really, I'd probably be a stronger reviewer by not mentioning Harry Potter, but man, if you thought Harry Potter would be way better with swords and intense violence and Hogwarts at its absolute most insane and dangerous all the time, well, this might just be the book for you. Uh, we'll be talking about that in my next video. In the meantime, thanks for joining me in this review. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, bye-bye for now.